Hey guys, so in this video we are going to go over some of the armor stacker basics. Uh, it's going to be sort of a series where we go over, uh, you know, just some of the uh, basic um, concepts about the armor stacker. You know, what uh, what is an armor stacker, or what skills can you use, what ascendancy do you uh, choose, or you know, what kind of builds are there, or what are your stat priorities, how do you scale damage, and all these kind of things. And um, rather than um, putting all of this info in a build guide every league, uh, I think it, it was better to just make a separate little um, video series about these kind of things where we go over all of those, you know, uh, concepts and all that kind of stuff. So we don't have to put it in the build guides every single league. So this first video is going to be very basic. So a lot of you guys might already know all this stuff, but this is meant for, you know, new players. And there are quite a few uh, new players this league uh, that have uh, that do want to try out armor stacking, but, you know, don't really understand uh, how to scale the damage or, you know, all this kind of stuff. And maybe this, this uh, series will help you out, give you an uh, understanding of what kind of, uh, you know, build you're actually playing and um, how to do uh, <coughs> uh, scale damage and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's get into it. So, first of all, you know, what is an armor stacker, right? So, in my opinion, a very biased opinion, right? Best melee build in Path of Exile, right? Or possibly even one of the best builds in the game. Really depends on what you like, but it is, uh, once we kind of get into, um, you know, what kind of stats you can achieve in this build, um, a lot of other melee builds will start to sort of um, fade away in comparison to what you can achieve with an armor stacker. Right, so build revolves around using the replica Dream Feather unique sword to scale our attack damage by a percent of our armor. Right, so here's the sword, you can see it on the wiki. So 1% increased attack damage per 450 armor. And armor stacker can, you know, on the low end will have about 500k armor and really really uh you know top end mirror tier gear you're gonna be looking at around 9 million uh plus armor right so you can imagine that it's quite a lot of uh increased damage right and if you look at my current character in 3.23 league you see um this character has about 8,000 percent increased attack damage from our armor right so that we're getting all this increased 8,000% increased at, uh, attack damage from this sword. Now, if I use two swords, then it would be basically just be doubled, right? So 16,000% increased uh, attack damage. It's pretty insane, right? So the replica Dream Feather basically gives us all of the percent damage scaling that we need, right? All right, so we get our armor in a few ways, right? So how do we get all this armor to scale with this uh, replica Dream Feather, right? So we get uh, the armor mainly from our grace and determination auras. We get it from uh, evasion conversion with iron reflexes keystone. We'll get into that a little bit later, uh, I think uh, after this. And then uh, stacking aura effect to boost our auras, right? So we're running grace, which gives us flat evasion and also more evasion and determination, which gives flat armor and more armor, right? So we're uh, stacking aura effect uh, to the moon to boost up these auras, right? Right, so we get some more armor and evasion uh, from our flasks, right? So there's the uh, Stibnite Basalt Flasks, Jade Flasks, um, and all these things that give you flat and more uh, armor and evasion, right? So we have the, some of that coming from the flasks. Uh, and then there is some rare uh, body armor modifiers uh, from the grasping mail right so this is a uh, rare chest that can drop in breach so let's check it out right so this is the grasping mail right and it uh, it I think you can drop from um, breach a flawless breach stone can drop it right or you get it by turning in a full inventory of breach rings so it is very very uh, rare like it's it's not like very easy to come by right and it when you um, actually identify the item, it can roll a certain amount, a certain number of breach specific mods, right? So you see there's these Chayula mods for like global defense, uh, you know, grants level 15 envy skills. There's a lot of other uh, mods you can get, but the one that we are looking for is there is the armor is increased by overcap fire resistance and evasion rating is increased by overcap cold resistance. So these are the main uh, mods that armor stackers are looking for and another uh, bonus one is this global defense 
Right, so that's kind of basically an overview of where all the armor sources come from for uh, Armor Stacker. Okay, so uh, we kind of went over this a little bit, but there is this uh, Keystone Iron Reflexes that converts all of our evasion rating to armor. So if we look into the stats over here, well, you can see that over 90% or pretty much all of our armor is coming from this conversion, right? So why is that? Um, well, basically, you can see actually the more or less is actually 1337 on my character, which is pretty insane, right? Um, pretty cool. I actually just realized that. <laughs> what is that? What is going on here? All right. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, all of your armor is going to be coming from this evasion conversion because of the way that this uh, evasion conversion to armor works, right? So if you're really uh, interested into like the actual formulas and all that kind of stuff, go check out the wiki for iron reflexes. But um, if you want to put it in layman's terms, you know, explain it simply, uh, basically flat evasion is going to be scaled by your evasion modifiers before it gets converted, right? Then it gets converted and then it gets scaled by armor. So it's kind of like double dipping, this kind of stuff. That's a very simple um, explanation, but you can see in the breakdown down here that, yeah, pretty much all of our evasion is coming from this conversion, right? So one important thing, right? So flat evasion gets scaled by both the modifiers to evasion and armor, right? So that's for increased and more, but only flat armor is only scaled by your armor modifiers. Well, what does this mean? Basically, it means that um, flat evasion, good, right? So you want to prioritize flat evasion sources wherever you can instead of armor. So that's why um, armor stackers are uh, trying to boost up your grace uh, aura, right? So that's why grace aura effect modifiers or grace gem levels are pretty much your top priority when you're playing an armor stacker because grace gives you flat evasion, right? So flat evasion, good, right? Remember? And it also gives you more evasion. So probably pretty much the most important aura for an armor stacker is going to be the grace aura and it's the one you're going to be focusing on to just like you know um, max out the gem levels uh, with you know certain gear items we'll get into uh, later I guess and then also with aura effect all right so aura stacking all right so armor stackers are pretty much just aura stackers right so it's armor stacker but we are um, pretty much just aura stackers, right? Aura stackers gives all of the flat damage we need from wrath and smite auras, right? So um, it also takes care of defenses, right? So because we can use, we're, we're stacking so much aura effect that we can use, um, you know, purity of ice uh, with melding of the flesh to actually just get 90 auras and take care of our defenses pretty nicely, right? And also, you know, getting your accuracy, you get all your accuracy you need just from one precision gem. Uh, and, um, you know, life regen or ES regen, if you're CI based, uh, just from your vitality, you can get up to like 600, 700, just flat um, ES regen just from that. So it takes care of, um, you know, some uh, regen for most, for the most part, right? So pretty much all of our offense and defense is taken care of by aura stacking. Right, so let's take a look at some of this uh, flat damage we can get. So. This is a breakdown of um, a breakdown of my character. You can see that we're getting a thousand flat added light uh, lightning damage from this wrath um, skill gem, right? And another uh, basically a thousand three hundred from the smite. So this is looking at the vol smite, but the smite is actually probably like a one k too. So all the flat damage you need is coming from your auras, right? So. Don't have to worry about flat damage on your weapon. I mean, you can't even get it anyways because we're using a unique sword, but this is pretty much where you get your flat damage, right? And I, I guess, you know, in Path of Exile, the way you scale damage for most builds, I think, is it's like the, the Holy Trinity, right? You get your flat damage, you get your increased damage, and you get your more damage, right? So that's pretty much how you scale your damage. So for Armor Stacker, you get your, your flat damage, from your auras, right? So your wrath and smite. That's why smite is pretty much you're gonna see smite in every single armor stacker build, even if they're not using smite as a main skill because of this flat damage it gives, right? So uh, flat damage comes from smite and wrath, and then the increased damage comes from the replica dream feather, and then the more damage comes from uh, I guess the skill gems, right? Your skill uh, support gems or 
um, maybe from Ascendancy Notables, right? So basically all of your damage scaling is taken care of pretty, uh, pretty easily, right? All right, so defenses are easy, right? Um, this is a um, image of my character in 3.23. You see, uh, let's take a look at the effective hit pool is infinite, right? Well, that's because this build is using Aegis Aurora and if you have Aegis Aurora and PLB and enough armor, your e your effective hit pull is going to be infinite because if we look down here, ES on block, um, we have so much armor that I'm recovering 73,000 energy shield every time I block. Um, pretty insane. Right, 90 all res, pretty easy to achieve. And if we look at the max hit taken, which is probably the most important stat to look at when you're looking for... Um, survivability, right? It doesn't really matter what the effective hit pull is. If, the guy, if a, a build has an effective hit pull of 2 million, but your max hit is only 10k, then it, you know it's going to be a shit build, right? Um, max hit take, max uh, hit is the, probably the most important stat to look at when you're looking at build defenses, right? So, uh, in this uh, patch 3.23, um, we have um, quite a lot of EHP. Uh, due to charms and all this kind of cool stuff, right? So you can get even, but I mean, even in other patches, if you play, there are versions of Armor Stacker that can get way, well over this um, this uh, number here, like easily the Fizz, Fizz Max hit can go all the way up to like 800k. Uh, and it, yeah, pretty insane. But anyways, defenses are, uh, I guess you could say easy because, you know, all you have to do is skill R effect, right? And you get your defense, get your offense. All right, so what kind of skills can you use, right? So basically you can use any attack skill that can be used with the sword, right? Because obviously we need to use the replica Dream Feather sword. So any kind of skill that can be used with the sword can be used, right? So smite is the most common, right? Because like we mentioned before, you want to benefit from the smite uh, aura for the flat added lightning damage. So other skills, like so, if, for example, if you use Molten Strike or Lightning Strike, then you're going to need to use Smite as a buff tool because it's pretty much like 50% of your damage, right? This Smite aura. Uh, so not all that bad. It just means you have one more button to push. But um, pretty much, you know, you can do Smite, uh, you can do Lightning Strike or is pretty common. Molten Strike is very common for Delvers. Most of the top Delvers, pretty much all the top Delvers are Molten Strike armor stackers. All right, and there's also some, you know, spectral, uh, spectral uh, shield throw variants or, you know, quite a lot of other skills that you can use and play around with. But basically, in general, any skill, any attack skill that can be used with a sword can be used. I mean, it's not going to be, um, you know, might not be ideal, but um, it'll work, right? Okay, so damage conversion. This is something that a lot of new players kind of get mixed up on is where do we get our damage conversion, right? Because I think for most builds, you gen they generally want to try to convert all of their, your damage into the element of choice, right? So for example, on Cold Blade Vortex, you want to convert 100% of Fizz to Cold, right? Because that's, um, and that's like a very important part of the build and like, got to make, got to make sure you have your 100% Fizz conversion, right? It's like emphasize right and then for other builds too it's like make sure you have 100% convert to lightning or fire or whatever right well for armor stacker not really all that important right because like we mentioned before the flat damage all of our flat damage is coming from our wrath aura and smite aura so we don't really even care about the little bit of fizz damage that we have on the sword right converting is not important you don't need to do it and that's why you can use a skill like molten strike which is basically a you know has fire conversion but we're doing lightning damage right so it's because yeah the flat damage all of our flat damage is just wrath and smite so it doesn't really matter if it's a cold skill or a fire skill right so it doesn't really matter because um of how we scale our damage right okay so what ascendancy to choose so um in my opinion i think you can make it work on any ascendancy last league i saw a build doing it on necromancer there was a necromancer armor stacker i even found the hierophant armor stacker i don't really know how good those kind of builds will be um but my opinion you can pretty much do it on any ascendancy you want might not be the best but you could probably make it work right so what are the most common ascendancies right and there are some 
Um, we'll go over four in this video here. You can see on the screen, there are a couple of reasons why people choose these ascendancies, right? So we'll get into those reasons. All right, so uh, Scion. So I'm very biased, right? I like Scion. Uh, I just like the class, right? So this is the, the class of choice for me. Um, so Scion gets a very nice um, place on the passive tree, right? You start out in the middle, it's easy to branch out and pick up a lot of the aura effect nodes on the tree and also some keystones, right? Uh, you can also start off from other classes uh, starting place, right? With your ascendancy, so that's pretty nice too. So, you know, since you can actually reach all of the aura effect nodes on the tree pretty much, um, Scion pretty much has the potential to have the highest amount of aura effect. Right, so Scion also does get more passive points, right? So your Ascendancy actually just gives you passive skills, right? So you have more passives than um, the other classes, which is very big for an en en endgame where every single passive point is, you know, going to cost a mirror, right? I mean, that's why one passive voices are so expensive is because they give you that one extra passive point. Uh, so, yeah, passive points is um, premium for armor stackers. Okay, so we get a free 15% aura effect from our Ascendancy. You get free Fortify, Intimidate, and Taunt, and basically it's more damage, right? Because you are um, you do more damage to Intimidated targets, right? So let's just see on the Ascendancy. It's from the Champion Ascendancy. Enemies taunted by you take 10% increased damage. Right, and also intimidate um, enemies to also take 10% increased damage. So basically, it's just like 20% more damage on Scion, right? Not to mention free fortify, which is very, a very big defensive layer, right? Okay, so Necromancer Aura provides a lot of attack and cast speed. So a lot of people ask, why do you guys go Necromancer on Scion, right? And Necromancer gives you um, this stat that's like it's an aura, right? So it's um, aura from your skills grant 2% increased attack and cast speed. So this is actually attached to each aura you have, right? And and as such, right, it scales with aura effect. So yeah, 300% increased aura effect, that 2% is going to go up to like, what, 6, right? So it, it does add a, a lot of increased attack and cast speed um, that other classes just don't get, right? So... It also has very good Forbidden Jewels. I guess every single um, class does have very good Forbidden Jewels, but one thing um, for Scion that you can get is you can get the Deadeye Jewels, which are pretty much uh, pretty amazing for projectile-based skills, right? Because you get plus one proj, you get mark effect, which is pretty big because, you know, proj, um, sniper's mark, pretty good for increased damage, right? Uh, and then you also get Tailwind. So you're not going to get Tailwind on any other um, Ascendancy unless you actually go play Deadeye or Pathfinder, which a lot of people don't do. Um, there's just no way to get Tailwind on the Armor Stacker except from this jewel, which is pretty cool because Tailwind is awesome, right? Um, there's also some cool ones you can get from like Guardian, which give you your Aura's grant increased um, life, mana, and energy shield recovery rate. So get some insane ES recovery on Scion if you decide to go for the Guardian route, right? There's also Berserker. Berserker has uh, access to Rage. I guess access to Rage is is pretty much pretty easy for a lot of other classes, right? But it is also another 20% more damage multiplier, right? So there's a lot of cool jewels uh, on Scion. Mainly notable is, I think, the one is uh, going to be the Deadeye Forbidden Flame Jewel and the Guardian one, right? So you get the it's pretty, really good for projectiles based skills, or if you want to tank up, uh, Guardian is pretty amazing. Okay, so Chieftain, after the Chieftain rework, um, Chieftain is one of the best ascendancies for armor stacking. So, oh, why is that? Well, Chieftain does get a free Ancestral Call from uh, Ascendancy, right? So that's one more damage support. So it's pretty much like 40% more damage, or maybe a little bit more, right? Pretty insane, right? get a free melding of the flesh so you don't have to use melding of flesh which gives you um, minus four max res or minus 70 to all res so you get a f you know basically free melding the flesh which is pretty insane right uh, you get easy resistances and very good synergy with a double overcap grasping male so before we went over some of the um, ways you can get armor and 
we did go over the grasping mail, which had armor is increased by overcap fire resistance. Uh, and evasion rating is increased by overcap cold resistance, right? So these mods, both of these mods can roll on the same armor, piece of armor, right? So you can have both the cold and fire overcap. And since Chieftain gets this uh, notable where it's like, if you, you get additional, I think, cold and lightning resistance based on your, how much uh, fire resistance you have at a reduced rate or value, right? So basically that means you can just stack fire resistance and gain tons of cold resistance for this uh, evasion. So you can pretty much just like, um, you know, get insane armor values just by playing Chieftain and stacking fire resistance because that's going to give you cold, in turn cold resistance, and then that's going to, you know, uh, work out really nicely with this double cap grasping mail. Uh, obviously, this is very expensive, right? Um, the, these grasping mails are extremely rare, but it is something that's very um, unique that uh, Chieftain does the best. I mean, obviously, you could just stack cold res and fire res on any ascendancy, but it is uh, going to be a little bit harder. You're not going to get as much bang for your buck, you could say, on other ascendancies. Chieftain can also use Unbreakable from Juggernaut to get a mini transcendence with no downside. So uh, what is this, right? So I think uh, if you know, um, Juggernaut gets this note, Unbreakable, that says like 8% of armor applies to elemental damage taken from hits. So it's kind of like transcendence. Uh, transcendence basically is the same thing, but it's 100% of your armor, but then it reduces your max res by 15 and also makes your armor not applied to fizz damage taken from hits. But uh, Chieftain could just grab this Unbreakable from Jug, um, so you don't you get basically get Transcendence with no downsides. It just makes you incredibly tanky, and you know like your your max hit taken is going to be similar to like what we saw in this um, screenshot here, 300 to like 400k max hit taken just from just using that jewel, right? So. Um, and also, you can also use the Berserker one, Aspect of Carnage, for, you know, like, insane damage, right? Uh, so Chieftain does have some really, really cool jewels to use as well. Um, but the most notable one is probably going to be this Unbreakable one, because it's going to make you in incredibly tanky. So, let's go over to Champion. So Champion's also a very popular choice. Champion gets free uh, Fortify, we get, it gets Intimidate, which is 10% increased damage taken. It gets Taunt, uh, Stun Immunity, Stun Immunity. Uh, while fortified, right, basically. You have free banner and 30% aura effect. So this does sound pretty good and all, but at the end of the day, I think um, uh, Scion is going to end up getting more aura effect. So even though Champion does get this 30% aura effect from its ascendancy, since it's in not really in a, a spot where you can go grab all of the aura effect nodes on the passive tree, you end up not really having as much as... Uh, a scion does right so but it is nice right a nice 30 percent aura effect boost um there is a lot of good forbidden jewels for champion right i'm not really sure exactly i don't really play uh champion or know too much about it but uh that's you know there is some cool jewels right you can get like um the gladiator one that gets increased attack speed or or you can go for like slayer and all those kind of cool things right so Okay, so not really much, too much to say about Champion, sorry guys. Maybe there are some other cool um, points, uh, you know, like things that to mention about Champion, but this is sort of what I came up with. Okay, so um, Jug, right? Um, so Juggernaut basically, like we went over before on Chieftain, Juggernaut just has this mini transcendence with no downsides, right? So insanely tanky from the get-go. You don't really need the Forbidden Flame and Jewels, uh, Flame and Flesh Jewels to actually get going. And then you can go grab the Chieftain Forbidden uh, Jewels for a free Melding of the Flesh, right? Or the 90 All Res, or, you know, or the um, Fire Res, Cold Res is increased by your Fire Res or whatever one you want, right? It gets easy accuracy, so accuracy is not a problem. You're stun and freeze immune, and you get lots of life or ES regen from untiring, right? So Jug, um, very, very tanky um, right off the get, you know, right off the start, so... Um, you don't really have to worry about getting Forbidden Flame Jewels or um, Accuracy or Stun and Freeze Immunity, you know, so maybe it is a good Ascendancy to start off with. Maybe swap, you play this first and then swap over the Chieftain once you have more gear. Or, or I'm not really sure, right? But uh, Juggernaut is another very popular Ascendancy due to the 
um, tankiness of the build. All right, and you also get increased attack speed from your accuracy, so you do get um, a little bit more damage that way. Okay, so um, when when you're choosing your ascendancy, like those those are some of the things you should be considering, right? I'm not really going to tell you which one is best because I think they all are very good, but um, I think either uh, Scion or Chieftain is preferable uh, just due to the amount of good synergies that they have uh, for armor stacking, right? If we look at Chieftain versus Juggernaut, it's like, well, maybe when you're starting out, Jug might be a smarter option, but once you have a lot of gear and money, well, you know, Chieftain is just doing everything better, right? Um, same thing with like Champion versus uh, like say something like a Scion, well, you know, maybe uh, maybe starting out, cha um, Champion might seem a little bit better or maybe a little bit cheaper to get going, but you know, at the end, uh, in uh, end game, Scion is going to do everything better, uh, in my opinion, right? So, if uh, I guess you know, if I had to tell you which ascendancy to play, it would probably be either Scion, Chieftain, or Juggernaut. Uh, but don't you know, just go. I think you guys have to go, you know, choose this for yourself, right? It's kind of hard to say because all, all these classes do have very good upsides. So, for me, the reason I play Scion is just because I like the character model, right? I just like the way it looks. Um, I also do like the Necromancer Aura because, you know, you get a lot of attack speed and cast speed and it feels really good. But that's basically it, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, choose so choose, choose on your own, guys. Um, all right, let's keep going. So, what kind of builds are there, right? Um, so, right now, as of making this video, there are three sort of main type of um, ways that people build their armor stackers. Um... And um, the first one is going to be Doriani's Prototype. Doriani's Prototype is uh, very cheap damage scaling, right? It's very easy to get quite a lot of damage on Doriani's Prototype because you have access to um, turning uh, enemies' uh, lightning res into like negative minus 200 or minus 150 um, pretty easily, right? It's pretty easy to get. Uh, enough minus uh, lightning resistance to start doing insane amounts of damage uh, with a very little investment. But, you know, Doriani's Prototype does have its downsides. I don't know if you guys have ever played with Doriani's Prototype, but lightning degen basically just one-shots you and it's kind of like a lot of people don't like it. So it does have some downsides, but very cheap, very cheap, easy uh, damage, right? It's also consistent damage, right? Because... Um, Monsters resistances basically do nothing. So if there's like a map mod where monsters have like 90 all res or um, And all that kind of stuff that doesn't really matter because Doriani's prototype just sets their resistance to what you have, right? So all your damage feels very consistent, right? Okay, so then we have the resistance stacker resistance stacker is um, using this grasping mail and one thing we do a little bit differently is so we are still stacking um, armor evasion and we're also stacking aura effect but we're also then going to focus on um, stacking a resistance either cold or fire like we, we saw on the um, grasping mail armors right there's the evasion ratings increased by your overcapped cold res or armor right or uh, whichever one right so you focus on if you're gonna use the cold mod you get a lot of cold res you can get up to like you know uh, uh, my build now is like six plus 600 percent or probably close to about like 650 700 increased cold res which then increases my evasion and gets me a lot more armor right um so that's sort of the resistance stacker you know on top of your aura stacking you also start stacking resistances okay so after this we have um a transcendence build so basically the same idea of this resistance stacker but we use this transcendence keystone from the militant faith right and transcendence um and and true end game like um if you're talking about multiple mirrors and all this kind of stuff is probably the tankiest build in the game um my build I, i've made a few of these transcendence builds in previous leagues and uh you can tank every single uber boss uh one shot ability like the maven brain explosion it's like piece of cake to tank that um you can go i have went down to like delve 6000 plus with it 6300 um basically it is like completely immortal and in, even in standard these builds just get even crazier and it's, it's pretty insane but a uh, downside is transcendence 
requires a lot of unique items that are extremely rare and with like the watcher's eye costing like from one to like five mirrors plus just for that so um it's it's uh, very expensive but uh, very very powerful defensive wise all right so that is sort of um uh, gonna be it for this video. I think we went over quite a few um, like things to introduce you to armor stacking and then in the uh, next video we'll go over um, a little bit like gear. Um, we'll kind of gear um, What are some like key gear items that like what, what what items do you need, you know to get the build started? What's the required? Items, um, how do you get them? What stats on the item are important? And for rare items, how do you craft them? And all that kind of stuff. So we'll go over that in the next video. But I hope you did enjoy this one. And if you did like it, um, please like it, subscribe, guys. Took a long, long time to make this video. And um, I'd appreciate that. All right. But anyway, that's going to be it for this one. And I'll see you next time.